today on Woodworking with Wes, we're in my living room and I have the perfect furniture dupe for your next project. I'm going to show you a picture of a West Elm TV console that we're going to customize for this space. Let's go out in the shop and get started. Okay, as with all of our projects, we begin with the whiteboard to show you what we're going to be doing. We're going to start by cutting our plywood pieces, but let me show you what we have in mind. Our console is going to be 59 inches wide, 25 inches tall, but it's going to have a 5 inch foot on it. We're going to have two glass doors to either side and two drawers in the middle. This is a kind of a detail of our end panel. We're going to have a little paneled end on it. We're going to get started by cutting out our plywood pieces. And I have listed my cutout here. We have 20 by 20 sides. That is this piece here with the overlay on it. 20 by 56 bottom. We have a stretcher across the top that will be our support for hanging our solid wood top. We have two panels to the inside here and a stretcher between our drawers. Now we're going to be cutting this out and doing some fancy little dadoing to make sure everything lines up correctly. And I'm going to walk you through each step as we do it and show you why we came up with these measurements in order to get this design when we're done. Then we're going to put a face frame on it. We've listed our face frame parts over here, but we're going to do our plywood piece first and then we'll make our face frame to match. I took a few minutes and broke down my full 4x8 sheets of plywood. I also wanted to talk about the material that we'll be using. This is a veneer plywood with a ply core, not an MDF core or a particle board core. This has a, a ply core. We're going to be using that for the body of our console. And so I broke it down and we're going to now cut it to width. Now remember, this we always will be referring back to our cut sheet. 20 inches wide is going to be the majority of our stock and so we're going to rip these three pieces down to 20 inches. So we'll set our saw at 20 inches, turn on our dust collector and rip these down to 20 inches. I mentioned that we had veneer plywood. I forgot to mention what kind of veneer. We're building this console out of red oak. So this is red oak veneer plywood that we're using and all of our solid wood will be red oak solid wood. These two pieces will become our 20 inch pieces. <laughs> Whenever you're cutting plywood, be sure that when you're pushing your plywood, you push it all the way through the saw before you let go. And that keeps it from binding up between the saw and the fence. So always push your wood all the way through. Okay, now these pieces are our sides, our interior sides and our exterior sides, uprights. So we have four of those. This is an extra piece that we'll be using later. This is the floor of our cabinet. This piece will become our two five inch hanging cleats that we have from the top. And we'll go ahead and cut those out next. With our stack dado head installed, we made a few preliminary cuts on a scrap piece of wood to determine the depth that I wanted to have my cut. I wanted it set at 3 16 of an inch. We're going to use this mostly for alignment purposes and we set our thickness of our stack dado head to correspond with the thickness of the material that we are going to be using or that we are using I should say. Okay let's get started. Now I have set my measurement already to where my middle upright panels were going to be and so what we're going to do we're going to turn this over this is the bottom side. We're going to make a cut this way and turn around and make a cut the other way. So let's take a look and see how we do. Oh, 
Okay, this will be represent our upright panels on both sides of our drawer. If we measured correctly, this should be 15 inches. Let's cross our fingers. We'll burn an inch and 16 inches. There we are, we actually did it right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and complete the remainder of our dado cuts and then I'm gonna come back and show you why we did our dado cuts and where they go and how they work. And then we're going to sand and put a finish on the inside of our cabinet before we assemble so that it'll all be sealed up on the inside. This gets a clear finish and we'll get that clear finish put together on the inside before we assemble. But let's go ahead and get the rest of our dadoing done first. With our dadoing complete, I wanted to show you how it kind of goes together. This is a, just a dry fit. We're gonna take it apart and sand it. The two slots here and there are the ones that we dadoed that we showed you. These are our upright center panels and there's a dado on this side for the shelf that behind the glass door and a dado on this side that is the center divider between our two drawers in the, the interior. Also corresponding dados to the outside. This is where our bottom rail will be. This is where our, this is our end panel and our shelf. And then of course there's the top stretcher that goes by, goes across the top here that will be used to anchor our solid wood top. We're gonna to go ahead and take this apart now, sand all our surfaces and give it the sealer coat for the inside. With the panel pieces of our carcass already cut out now and with a coat of finish on the inside, we're ready to do our assembly of our console. Before we do that, however, let's glue up the top, our solid wood top. Now I went ahead and milled my pieces that I'm going to glue up. Now by milling, I mean I planed it to thickness and straight lined it so that it would go together in my glue up. I also marked, if you'll notice, I have little marks across the top here. I line those marks up to all three pieces so that I know that I have my wood right where I want it. Okay, so we're going to just glue. This is just gonna be just glue and clamps. While I'm doing this, I wanna talk a little bit about the clamps that we're using. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. The clamps that I am using are a half inch Bessie bar clamp. The reason I want to talk about those is because I went to my big box store to buy them and they were over $20 for just the ends. I went online to Amazon and I was able to buy the ends for 25% less than at my big box store and they had a little add-on on the purchase for the actual pipe of the pipe clamp and I was able to buy my clamps and have them all done for less than I would have paid just for the ends at my big box store. Anyway, I'm going to provide you a link to those Bessie clamps. These are the best clamps, in my opinion, that are available on the market right now. I love the way it holds it up off the table. That's one of the things I really like. I can get good pressure here. We're looking for a good squeeze out along our line and we're getting that. Okay, there's our center clamp. We're gonna put three from the bottom and two from the top. And so we'll put this one across the top here. We wanna make sure that we keep our surfaces flush. That'll make our sand out much easier. Okay, there. And then we'll come out here to the end and again making sure that our boards are good and level and we'll apply even pressure all the way along. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. All right. And we're good there and we're good there. So Tighten that down. And then our final clamp at this end. I'm gonna move this out a little bit more right to the outside edge so I can get a little more pressure right on the outside edge. 
And there we are. And you can see we've got good squeeze out all along our seams, which means we have the right amount of glue. Okay, and we'll just test our pressure all the way along, make sure we're even pressure. I can tell by the amount of pressure I have to put on my hand on the clamp. And that tells me that I have equal pressure all the way along. Okay, that one needs a little bit more. There we go. All right, our top is now glued up. We're ready for assembly. With our panels laid out, this is the floor of our console. This is the end panel. These are the interior panels that go here and here. This is the side that faces into where the glass door is. This is the side that faces in where the drawers are. So this piece goes like this, and the other piece goes just opposite. We're going to go ahead and assemble these two pieces first with the stretcher that is going to go between the two drawers. So being as we're working on the drawer piece, we'll turn like this. And we'll turn this one like this. And our stretcher is going to go just along the front because it's just a divider between the two drawers. So it's going to go just like that. And you can see how that fits in our little dado. And we're going to put a nail from the outside and a little bit of glue. So I'll show you how we put a little of this together as we get ready to go. We're using inch and a half, 18 gauge brads. And let's put just a little bit of glue. We don't want so much glue that we have a lot of squeeze out because that's not the kind of application we're doing here. We want this to be cleaner. So let's take this. Yeah, okay, got that right. Okay, we'll put this piece in here, flush with the front of the panel. This is the front. Put one nail there. Let's make sure we're flush and we're good. Okay. So we're putting three nails like that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, let's lay this down here. We'll put a little glue here. Same thing. Make sure that it's flush with the front. Whoa, getting away from me there. Okay. And one, two, three nails. Okay. Now let's take, and this assembly is going to go in here like like this so let's bring this back over here where i'm working okay let's tip this up because we assemble when we do our assembly we do our assembly with the back against our assembly table and so this is now the floor of our console we're going to spread some glue in the slots here and we're going to put our panels in on top of our glue and we're going to nail them from underneath just like we did our stretcher piece so let's do that a little bead of glue again not so much that we have squeeze out but enough to give us some holding power against our panel i'm going to tip these in to these slots here where i can see them really good okay flush with the front flush with the front pound them down in our hole there all we need to do are to, to put them into our dado is just a little bit of pressure because we made them the right size I'm going to give one nail up front here And then 
I'll turn it up like this and I'll finish doing my nailing along the line of my panel so that I nail in, into the bottom of my panel all the way. So I'll come back after I've got that done. I turned my console around so you could see how I nailed along this line into the bottom of my center panel. Okay, let's turn this back around now like this. The next thing we put in, this is the shelf that goes behind the glass door. Now, I put a solid wood edge on it, sanded it so that it's all nice and smooth. This will fit in this slot here, just like this. One thing I want to point out, this panel, this shelf, is one-eighth of an inch less than the depth of my cabinet. I want to, you to remember that because when we get around to putting the hinges on, we're going to be doing a special application where we use soft close hidden hinges on a flush mount application. That's a little different than we've done before and a little different than you'll see most places. So you have to have that space, that eighth of an inch space, so that your door is flush with your face frame because a hidden hinge actually pushes your door out one eighth inch so that the door has room to swing and we want that door, when it comes down, to be flush with our face frame. And so we're going to make the mounting blocks for our hinge plates the same depth as our shelf, which is one eighth of an inch less than the whole sides and bottom of our cabinet. Let's go ahead and get this panel put in. And then we'll do the same thing to the outside edge here. We'll put our bottom and our shelf into the corresponding dados that we have. Let's go that far. Again, a little bit of glue. Now, just to make life easy on me, rather than glue down our slot, which is upright, I'm going to put a little glue along the edge of my shelf, like that, and then put my shelf into my dado. And then I don't have to worry about trying to keep my glue from running all the way down. Okay, there we are. All right. Now, I'm going to turn this around to me so that I can see better, but let me show you what I'm going to be doing here as I get ready to do this. If you'll notice, my dado on my inside where my shelf goes is just an inch lower than my dado where my divider is, where my uh, stretcher is for my drawers. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn it around like this, and we're going to use our dado that goes all the way through as an indicator of where to put our nails for our shelf. And I've got to be able to see that, so I'm going to get around here like this and one inch down. Now I'll turn it back to you so you can see. You can see how I've put the nails down there and my nails went into my shelf just like they were supposed to. How about that? Isn't that a wonderful thing? turn our cabinet back like this. Now this is the end panel. This is our outside of our cabinet. This is our inside that we've put the finish on. We'll run a little glue down here. We'll tip it up. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to nail this because there's a reason we're going to nail this a little different. Okay. Glue. And glue. Line it up with our panels, tip it up, and they go right into the slots like we planned. Okay, I want to make sure this one is flush, and that's right. All right, there. 
pull this in so I can see what I'm doing. I can sight down here. I'm, I've done this before, so I can sight down that panel like that and make sure that I hit it. Okay, so I've got that. Now, I'm going to come around here so that you can see a little better. Before we put the nails in our shelf, first off, we want to make sure that that's down flush so we have our eighth of an inch space. We're going to have a paneled effect on the outside that we're going to apply to the outside. We don't want any nails through the middle here if we can help it. This piece is going to be inch and a quarter. This piece is going to be two. So we're going to put just one nail here. And that center of that panel is at 10 and set 9 and 7 sixteenths. So we're going to go down here, 9 and 7 sixteenths. And we're going to give us two nails there. And that's all we're going to nail that so that we don't have to worry about this. We're going to sand this so after we get this all put together and everything. We're going to sand this before we put our panel effect on the outside. But we don't want to have to sand a bunch of bullet holes either. All right. Next part of our assembly is our top stretcher. This will be what we anchor, use to anchor our top that we just glued together. Our dados line up. Let's show you how that works. Slide this over here so you can see. It fits on the inside of this dado. It fits over the top of these panels with these dados. This is the exact same length as our bottom, so it fits into our dados just like everything else. And let's go ahead and, and put that in. And I'm going to do that by bringing my cabinet over here and put that end over like that. And you can see now how that stretcher fits inside the dado in the top and over my panels. There and there, just like that. And that keeps my spacing perfect. Because I did my dadoing at the same time that I dadoed my bottom, I also dadoed my stretcher. So my spacing is all held in place because my dadoing all is all the same. My measurements are all going to be the same. So we're going to go ahead and nail that in. One front, one back. Okay, you can begin to see how it's going to come together. Here's where our glass door is here. This is our shelf. These are the drawers, end panel, and it's all going to be standing up five inches off of the floor with the feet that come part of which will be made by the face frame, part of which made, will be made by the applique that we're going to be putting on our end panels. But I'll go ahead and finish the rest of the carcass and then we'll work on the end panels. We're getting ready to mill some of our wood down for our applique pieces over our end panels. I wanted to talk to you about what I mean when I say milling. This is my milling station. It's on wheels so I can roll it around. I hook it up to my dust collector and it has my 10 inch Wahuda jointer, my 12 inch Oliver planer, and I have it on a cart so I can wheel it out of places when I need it. But I, I have it all plugged in ready to go. Let's go ahead and mill some thickness and you can see how my little milling station works. Hearing protection. You can see by running your pieces back and forth, you mill the thickness of your wood down. So like I say, when I talk about milling, this is what I'm talking about. We're getting ready now to take our half inch material that we just got through milling and making our frame piece for the end. The first thing we need to do is sand our end panel. You see the X on there, that was so that I could remember which side was out. But let's go ahead and sand it. 
We're going to sand at 150, which is going to be our final sand. But because we're putting wood over the top of it, it's easier to sand it before that. So sand we go. <laughs> Okay, there we are all sanded. We'll just wipe that off a little bit. Now, all the nail holes that were from the assembly work that we did are all going to be hidden by our framework. Now, here's our framework pieces. They're just half inch strips. I cut my, let me put this so you can see the little angle at the end. I cut a 14 degree angle on the side of this the reason being is when we make our doors and drawer faces with our style and rail set, we're going to be using our beveled style and rail set, and it is beveled at a 14 degree. So we're just matching that 14 degree bevel on the style and rail set that we're going to be using to make our doors. Now this is the front of our cabinet. We're going to put a small style on the front side of our cabinet and make it flush with our panel. So let me get all hooked up here with our air. We'll put a little glue on it and then we'll just tack it on with some 23 gauge headless pins that are one inch long so they go through our half inch material and into our plywood panel and hold it fast. We're going to put a little bead of glue on the back of our piece that we're applying. We don't want a lot because we don't want it to squeeze out. We definitely don't want this to squeeze out because if it squeezes out, it would squeeze out and it would be too hard to clean that up. That's why we sand it in advance. I also, after I cut that little bevel on my table saw, I hand sanded that little bevel with a piece of sandpaper so that it would all be sanded also. Okay. All right. So, you can see this little piece here. Now, our top and bottom rails also have that little 14 degree bevel, but it also has a little 14 degree cut on the end so that it fits in to our style that we put up. So this becomes our rail piece. There'll be a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom. So let's put a little glue on that. Again, not too much. We can put a little bit of glue here on the end because we want to glue that joint together. But we don't want any squeeze out on the inside against our panel. It's okay to have a little squeeze out right here. That's just fine because we're going to be sanding that surface with our sander. Okay. Okay, there's our top rail. Our bottom rail is going to look just like that across the bottom. So let's go ahead and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece, this is our back style. Our back style goes down here. It's two inches. This is inch and a quarter but it's going to have a three quarter inch face frame on it. So this is going to look two inches. This is two inches. This also hangs over the back of my panel. If you look, it fits right here. And you can see where there's a little bit of a, of a recess from the panel. That is to accept the quarter inch back so that the quarter inch back will be hidden from the side view also. But we're going to go ahead and put that on there. I'm going to take my pencil reach around the back side here and give it a little mark. That tells me where to put my glue. We're going to put a little glue on there. And the reason we're putting this style on without putting the bottom rail on is so we can use that bottom rail as a spacer. And I'll show you how we do that in just a second. But let's get this Okay, we're flush with the top, flush with the side. We're going to give it one nail at the top, like that to hold it. Now we're going to use this rail and we're going to put it in the center and we're just going to hold it and push up against 
and that is going to be used as a spacer and we're going to do the same thing down low here to make sure that we're properly spaced front to back on our back style. Okay, now let's take our bottom rail, a little glue at the bottom, or on the back I mean, a little glue on both of our ends, and we'll nail this piece in flush with the bottom of our panel, like that. Okay, and now we've created a paneled end by just putting this half inch over the top of the panel that was part of our carcass construction. Now we have a beautiful paneled end. All right, we're going to do the other one the same way and we'll go ahead and sand this all out and then come back and put our face frame on. Okay, I meant to mention this extension down below our panel. This is our leg that holds it up off the floor. Now, it's only a half inch thick here. We're going to be adding some thickness to it to make a two inch by two inch leg. When we put the face frame on the front here, we will also be adding some stock in the corner of it to create a solid two by two foot leg. So these will be solid legs when we get all done, but we'll do that by adding pieces to this existing structure to give it a good solid leg. Okay, you can see with our end panels all done, we now are up the, to the height that we wanted, and our face frame continues to work on our front leg. Now, our face frame, what we did is we took our measurements, we cut our pieces, we sanded the interior of them so that we didn't have to worry about that afterward. We used our Craig pocket jig and we put our frame together with pocket holes. And then let's just set this up here like this. And that's where our face frame is going to go and it's going to look like that. And what we'll do to attach our face frame is we'll glue the face of our plywood panels and then we'll just face nail our face frame on and then putty and sand and then our face frame will be on like I say once we get this much done we still have our top and our doors and drawers to go but our cabinet is coming together and it's really starting to look nice this is going to be a very nice console Since we last talked, I did install my buildup on my feet underneath. So these are now solid legs. These are glued and clamped in place, and I've allowed them to dry. But let's tip it up and take a look at it. Also, after I had nailed the face frame on, I went back, I puttied all of my nail holes, and I sanded my face frame and my end panel so that I'm all rough sanded. Now, now by rough sanded, I mean I have sanded to 100 grit and now I'm going to sand 120 and 150 for our final sand, but I'm not there yet. The next thing we want to do is build the doors and the drawer faces. So let's go over to my table saw where I have my router table set up and we're ready to build some doors. I have set up my router table here, but I want to talk about some of the material. We have broken down our math for our styles and rails for our doors. And I want to talk a little bit about how we do that. Our door is going to have a two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch style. 
and then the rail has to go in between that. So what we, you do when you do your math, you take the overall width of your door, you subtract two and a quarter and two and a quarter, so four and a half inches, and then you add three quarters of an inch for the depth of your tongue. So this is the end of a rail piece. This is actually my sample piece that I got all set up. But your t the tongue on your rail stock is three eighths of an inch. And so you add three eighths of an inch to the size of the distance between your two styles. So let's just do a little hypothetical math. Let's say you have a 15 inch door. You have a two and a quarter and a two and a quarter. Okay, minus four and a half is 10 and a half inches between the styles. So your rail is 10 and a half inches plus the three quarters of an inch, which is three eighths on one side and three eighths on the other. So that would make three quarters of an inch plus your 10 and a half. You are now 11 and one quarter for the size, for the dimension of your rail stock. And that's the way you calculate out your style and rails. First, you get your size of your door. You determine what the thickness of your style and rail stock is. Then subtract your, rail, your style stock thickness from the overall width of your door and add the distance of the thickness or the depth of the tongue on your rail stock. That sounds awful complicated, but it really is very, very simple. All you're doing is making sure that when you get your rail stock done on both ends and your style stock has your style and rail cut in it, it goes together and keeps your door the width that it should be. Anyway, I've done all that. Here's our style stock for our drawers. Here's our style stock for our doors. Here's our rail stock for our drawers. Now our rail stock for our drawers is going to be real thin. And so I'm doing all four pieces at once. And, and I want you to go back and look at a couple of the videos. And we're going to provide a link to a couple of the videos where I've done some doors. I always make my wood multiple thicknesses. It's safer to run it through your router table when you can have a bigger piece to hold on to. So this is two styles. This, this is two rails. So by running the rail ends on both ends and then going back and running my groove on the outside edges, then I split it afterwards when I get done or cut it to the correct dimension. And that way my dimensions are all consistent, but I have more control over my piece of wood as I'm sending it through my router table. And like I say, we've set up our router table. There's a bearing in the middle of this two cutters right here. That bearing rides on the end of my tongue. So when you run it through like this, you can see how it cuts. Those are the carbide teeth. There's your little bearing you can see. The end of the rail stock runs on the bearing and slides across that, and that controls your depth. When I'm getting all set up and, and everything, I actually make sure that the face of my fence is the same as my bearing. So when I run across here, I run off of one side of my fence on my bearing onto my other side of my fence, and that gives me a better control and a better even cut. Okay, let's get started. First thing we do, plug in our router table, put on our hearing protection. This is our sample piece. We're gonna run one more cut on our sample piece. This is my bevel style and rail set. And you can see the little bevel here on the face of the, this is rail cut. That is exactly the 14 degree angle that we used when we did our applique on our end panel to make sure that it matches. This is the rail cut. When I get ready to do my style cut, I'll come back here and I'll sand off these little feathers by just taking a piece of sandpaper and hitting across there, those little feathers will come off. 
Okay, we're ready for that. Let's go ahead and run our rail stock, rail for our drawers. You can see by having a larger piece, we're able to control our stock better. It rides on both fences as we're going through the cutter, and I'm able to hang on to it better and stay away from the blade with my hands. So it just makes it easier, safer, better cut. So let's go ahead and get set up with the style portion of our cutter. The other one, this is the rail cut, so now we'll do the style cut. After we got done running our rail stock, we talked about the little feathers. I wanted to show you how to clean that up. On the back side, we just take a little piece of sandpaper and we just sand along the face of our stock. And then just a little bit down there and that cleans up that feathers. And we do the same with the front. This is the front side of our door. You can see how those little feathers are falling off. And then we just take our piece of sandpaper and just clean up. And now it's all cleaned off and ready to run through our style bit. Okay, that's just so easy. Now I have this set extra deep. I'm going to show you one of the things that we're going to run into here, but I did it on purpose because I wanted to have as much profile up front as I could in front of our glass doors. So let's get ready to run our style stock and I'll show you what I'm talking about and then I'll complete all the style. You can see by having our piece double wide, we just go down both sides. Now we'll cut it into the width that we want, but I'm able to hang on and be more safe with my fingers away from the blade. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. We had a little feather on the end here. Well, we also have a little feather on the top of our style stock, which we'll have to clean off. But I did that on purpose because I wanted to have as much face stock here as I could get away with. I wanted that because I just wanted that look to be a little heavier in front of the glass that we're going to be putting in our glass doors. I'll go ahead and finish running all of my rail pieces. Then we'll come back and we'll cut these to size and I'll show you how they go together. All right, with our styles and rails all cut, we're ready to assemble a door. This is our glass door. Now, in order to fit the glass in, we need to remove this little back part of our style and rail. So this is our style and uh, cut. This little back piece here has to come out in order for the glass to fit. I've already done it on the rail pieces because you can go ahead and cut it on the table saw with the rail pieces. We have to work it out a little differently when we do the style pieces because we have to glue the door together. But let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you how Oh, here's my pencil. I'm going to show you how I glue a door together. They only get glued where the style and rail comes together. So I always just take my pencil and I just put a little mark here at each end. This shows me where my glue has to go. And I don't want any glue to squeeze out into the middle of the door. So by making my mark back a little bit, I'm able to control that glue. Okay, I just take my glue bottle and I just rub some glue on the faces of my rail stock and a couple of drips inside the groove. Same at this end. If you have one of those little teeny brushes that you like to use to spread your glue around in here, 
that works just great too. I don't do that just because I've learned how to do it without it. But if you want to do it that way, that's just great. Okay, styles, rails. Let me put your rail in here. And I always cut my styles and rails the exact size that they should be. Some people that I've seen in the past like to make their door a little long, making their styles extra long, and then they can cut to the size and they say that helps them square it up. And maybe it would, but I like to do it this way so that when I get done, my door is exactly the size that it should be. Okay. Glue pressure on the joint of my door, so top and bottom, style and rail. We want to be flush, okay. We'll encourage that to be a slide down there a little better. There we go. We're still good there. And you just, everybody has their own way. I like to just kind of work the corners, make sure they're where they're supposed to be. If you cut your doors square, your style and rail pieces, if you cut them good and square, your door will glue up square. Or so it is according to theory. I've got to pound this down a little bit, and so I'm going to... There we go. go. Back into here. Being as this is a glass door, however, we'll want to check it for square. And we need to encourage it a little bit that way. And there we are. Now it's square. Okay, give a little bit more pressure. Pressure. Make sure. I push it down tight on the clamps. That helps hold my door straight, too. And then I always kind of give it a... Oh, yeah, we're in great shape. Okay, there's one of our glass doors all glued together. We got another one just like it. And then this is our drawer stock and we have to cut some little quarter inch panels for those but we'll go ahead and get all of our doors and drawer faces glued up with our quarter inch round over bit installed in our trim router we're going to route the bottom legs and down the corners of our cabinet i've already done this so you can see but we'll go ahead and complete the rest When we complete the sanding on this, we're going to go around the openings, the drawers and the doors, with a 1 8 inch round over, and then we're going to put a 1 8 inch round over around our doors and drawer faces. So when they get in here and get it in place, there'll be a little round over into the seam and a little round over from the face frame into the seam. You'll see how that comes together, but we'll go ahead and finish our routing and then come back and put a final sand and then the cabinet part of it is ready for finish. All right, we have our cabinet all routed and sanded. We also have the door routed and sanded. I want you to see how it goes. Now this will be spaced. There should be a 1 8 inch space all the way around. So we don't have our hinges on yet, but you can see what we're talking about, how this will fit in here just like this. Now the one thing that we talked about, we're going to be using hidden hinges and I have to have some sort of blocking here in order to mount those hinges. I measured the depth that I need to have. I need to have 
three quarters of an inch beyond here to mount this little face frame clip. And the face frame clip lips over the face frame like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a spacer block and then I'm going to put a solid wood block and it will fit flush with, remember how we kept our shelf back one eighth of an inch? Because the way the door closes, there, there's a one eighth inch space in back of the door that the hinge has to work. So if we line our block up to our shelf, then that gives a place for our mounting plate for our hidden hinge to go. And that will allow our door to open and close on a flush mount look, but still have a soft pocket hinge to make it work. And we're gonna do that. That's the first thing we're gonna do. We gotta nail in a block here, here, and on the other side too. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to mount our block, we're gonna use inch and a quarter, 18 gauge nails. We're gonna put a little glue on the back side of our block and slide it in here and put it back in the corner. That will hold that in place. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with our finished block. Our finished block is solid wood so that we don't have any plywood edge showing. When we did our shelf here, we put a quarter inch solid face on our plywood shelf so that we wouldn't have any plywood showing. But we're just gonna use a solid block right here. And remember, we've gotta space our block flush with our shelf, so that recesses that block one eighth inch back from our face frame. Okay, just like that. And we'll do the same thing up here and on the other side. And then when we get ready to put our door in, this is where our mounting plate will fit just like that for our pocket hinges. Okay, once we get that taken care of, our cabinet is now ready for finish. And we're going to use, let me show you what we're gonna use. We're gonna use Minwax Polycrylic Water Base, and we'll just paint brush this on. We're gonna give it two coats. We'll put one coat on, let it dry, give it a soft sand, and put a second coat on to give it a nice smooth finish, just like we did in the interior. And then once we'll also do the top. Now the top, I've already taken the top, sized it, and sanded it also. While I was sanding everything else, I did the top. I didn't show you that, but it's all done, ready to go on top. This because of the fact that it's all sanded just like everything else, and I didn't want you to watch too much sanding. That's kind of boring, but anyway, we're all ready to go. So let's go ahead and get our mounting blocks in, grab our paintbrush, and put some finish on. With our polycrylic and a soft bristle brush, let's go ahead and get ready to put. Now remember, this is our initial coat of finish. So we're just gonna make sure we get it on there and we don't wanna make a mess, but we wanna make sure we get plenty of finish on here. So want to make sure we paint the inside of our foot that we did a build up on so that it has a finish on it. Okay, we'll even get a little bit of finish on the underneath side of our rail stock there. Help seal it up. that color in the oak, the red oak, when you put a finish on it, it starts bringing out that 
beautiful wheat color. There are many different kinds of oak, even different kinds of red oak. When I go to my wholesaler, I always ask for northern red. Now, northern red is a cabinet grade that has a very consistent color. And so I always ask for northern red. Now, you might have to check around a little bit as you check with your suppliers, but that's what you want, is you want to have a nice, consistent color, especially if you're doing like I'm doing and doing a clear finish. You don't want to have a real dark mineral streak or something like that that you would have problems with. Okay, so just like that. And we'll just work our way around the corner and get all of our face frame done and all the way across. And in our other end panel, we have our doors ready to go, our drawer faces ready to go, and our top ready to go. So we'll just take our time, make sure we get all of our painting done. Okay, we'll come back when we're all done here. We'll show you how to do a soft sand and get ready to put on the second coat. All right, we put our finish on. Now, I talked about sanding it in between. I just used a sanding sponge that I purchased from Sherwin-Williams. It said it was fine, as was the grit indicator. And we just sanded it with the grain, always with the grain, and might knocked off the corners, gave it a second coat. It's smooth now, but I don't know. I might even give it another coat, but we'll see. But let's go ahead and get it put together. Let's put the top on. This is our solid wood top that we made. And we're going to anchor our top. We're going to use inch and a quarter grabbers. And we're going to use these hanging cleats that we put in our front and back stretchers. We'll screw through those front and back stretchers to anchor our top solid to our cabinet. We used our grabbers to tighten our top down. After we got our top on, we nailed our back on. So now all we have left is doors and drawers. So here's our drawer faces that we're going to put on, like that. And here's our doors we're gonna put on. Now, we've gotta put some glass in our doors, and we're gonna put our doors on. We've already got our hinge plates mounted on the blocks that we installed. I'm going to go ahead and install this door without glass just so you can see how it works. We've mounted our hinge plates on the blocks. The hinges just clip onto those mounting plates like that, click, click, and our door closes with soft close. Our spacing is around the same, and you can see how by using those hinges, our face is flush all the way. So our door is the same thickness as our, or the same level, should say, as our face frame. And our drawer face will be the same like that. And so we'll go ahead, let's get our doors and drawer faces put on, and then we'll come back, we'll install our hardware, and I'll see you at the very end when we got it all done and you can see what it looks like. Okay, here is our TV console all finished off. I ordered the glass the wrong size, so don't go thinking you don't make mistakes. But anyway, it came out very nice and I hope you really enjoyed it. We're having a little trouble with our sound, our audio, so the last clip of this video is going to sound a little funny, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the build and I hope that you stay with us on woodworking with Wes.